Hey, this is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and this one is awesome. It's with Amir Jalali from Redbird Barbecue, which is going to be opening up in March, April of next year, 2023, in Port Natchez, Texas, which is about an hour and 15 minutes away from Houston, southeast of Houston, closer to the Louisiana border. Usually in these intros, I give a lot of information, but I think it would be better if you learned it from Amir himself because it's kind of an amazing story. It involves Fiji's Barbecue Spring Branch, it involves Johnny White Jerby Barbecue. It involves Goldie's Barbecue. And of course, Lane, Jalen, Chuck, the whole team there. He's had a fantastic journey. It's still going on because his barbecue joint isn't opening up so quickly. He actually has a chance to spend more time with them. But there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. And you get a really good chance to know what it's like coming from the outside into Goldie's and being there when they made number one on the list. So there's just a ton of information. He also talks about what his new barbecue joint is gonna be like. He's gonna have two 1,000 gallon Centex pits. He talks all about Centex and Michael Johnson there. And I already know, and you guys already know how amazing Centex is. But you get a chance to hear it from Amir and his relationship with Michael. I think that Port Natchez is gonna have something incredibly special with Redbird Barbecue, and also too, which is interesting, you get to know how important the name Redbird Barbecue is. I also want to thank Lisa Fain. I think that's how you pronounce her last name. Lisa Fain, homesick Texan. I'll put her information below. She and I were chatting about something else, and she mentioned that I should talk to Amir from Redbird. I had heard about Redbird, heard about Amir. It was perfect, and I can't thank her enough for making that connection. So sit back and enjoy this great conversation with Amir. I have a website at kevinsbbqjoints.com on all the social media at kevinsbbqjoints. But at the end, stay safe and visit your local barbecue joint. Good evening. Oh, good afternoon. Good evening. Amir, good to talk to you. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm excited to to hear about your journey. I'm so, so curious. I'm so, so curious about a lot of things. I'm curious about Redbird, and we'll talk about that at the end. And just to, to clarify again, is it Port Natchez? Am I saying the... Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're saying that right. Port Natchez, Texas, you know, that's where I grew up. You know, that's where I wanted to really bring back um, something to the city that we can all be proud of. Um, there's really not much craft barbecue down there, you know, so that was an, another idea was, you know, bringing that craft style barbecue down to Port Natchez. And Port Natchez for people that might not know, it's closer to Louisiana. It's, it's, is it South of Beaumont or just yeah, it's a little south of uh, southeast uh, of Houston, about an hour fifteen southeast of Houston, and then it's about thirty minutes from the Louisiana border. So it's right yeah. in between those. Uh, yeah, Beaumont's the probably the biggest city around Port Natchez for sure. Okay, and then I think I remember. Does the ten freeway go by? Yeah. Is it, or how far away? How far away are you? Because you're right now. Are you in Port Natchez right now? Uh, I actually live in Beaumont. Okay. Um, so being, I'm really close to the I-10, okay. uh, um, and then from Beaumont to Port Natchez is probably about a 20, 25 minute drive. Okay. Cause it's so interesting that, cause I'm, I'm in California, I'm in Los Angeles, the 10 starts at the ocean here at the Pacific and it goes all the way through. Yeah, the country. Great. That's amazing. That would be a fun, yeah, I, I want to do that someday. I'd love to document that and do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's another thing that's going to be really cool is like, we already have 1701 in Beaumont and yeah. they're doing a great job, you know, and people in barbecue, they travel everywhere. Yeah. You know, I've seen that a lot at Goldie's just working up there, being around the customers. And so they'll have another spot to stop off when mm -hmm. they're in Vermont traveling through uh, other than, you know, 1701. So yeah. I think that's really cool. cool and it's great to have, yeah, two spots because it, it gets, it, as opposed to one spot just being out in the middle of nowhere, which is yeah. hard for a lot of places. It's nice to have kind of like a group. So that way they're, they could hit. Yeah. Multiple. Yeah. 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 And I just uh, recently, a couple months ago, kind of posted publicly that I was going to be, be bringing a barbecue joint down to Port Yeah. Nation. You know, all of the 1701 guys reached out. They were super nice, you know, uh, so that type of energy is is what I love about barbecue. That, and that's what and we kind of talked off camera and we've talked via text yeah. about how, you know, we both love the bar the food. We love everything about the food, but it's the people that makes it worthwhile and makes it so important. No, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And that, that's the, what that energy and just being around each other, it brings everyone together. That is exactly why I want to open up in my hometown of Port Natchez. And I think from what I remember, that's sort of how you got, that is how you got connected to barbecue in the first place. Let's talk a little bit about your past. So you grew yeah. up in Port Natchez. 
Yeah, I grew up in Port Neches, uh, went to PNG High School, okay. and then I uh, graduated from PNG. I went to Texas State my freshman year, um, and then I transferred to Baylor and finished off uh, Baylor okay. business. Um, I graduated from Baylor, and I went straight into like the corporate world. Mm -hmm. Um, I was a director of sales, worked in a, in Houston, and I love the people I worked for. I love the company I worked for, and I honestly love sales. You know, I, I loved everything about it, but I was always coming home kind of like, you know, I, what more can I do? You know, what else can I do? And I've always wanted to open up a restaurant. You know, so with that, just my dad's always really been a big cooker at home. Um, so, you know, just that influence from him all those years and me wanting to open up a restaurant and where I'm from, like I'd mentioned before, there's really not much, you know, <laughs> style barbecue. And so this has probably been about, I'd say probably about 18 months in the works. Okay. So, so yeah. not long, but long enough, 18 yeah, months. Yeah. And not long. Um, you know, like this time last year, I was just putting in my two weeks at my full-time job and at, while I was working my full-time job, I actually worked at Fiji's Barbecue for a little while. Oh, which, lo uh, which location? Uh, the Spring Branch location. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Which was a really cool experience for me. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love Patrick. Um, I think he's a great guy. You know, Aaron, she's great as well. And I think what they're doing at Fiji's is, is unlike anything else in barbecue. It's, it's, they're, they're in their own lane, you know yeah. what I mean? Like in and the I country, they're their own lane. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, and when I was in Houston, I was just really trying to figure out what concept, what's a really good concept that I could bring back down to my, my hometown. Mm -hmm. And I've always loved barbecue, you know, and I thought I knew a lot about barbecue until yeah, I kind of jumped you know. into barbecue, you know, and the, the love that I have for barbecue now is, is just on another level, you know? So the, did you start working there because Fiji spring branch hasn't been open that long. They just had their yeah. year anniversary. Were you open? Were you helping them? open the restaurant is that what you're doing yeah yeah actually okay. um, i was hired probably a month before they opened uh, uh, i thought that was a really uh, strategic and, and good thinking by them was just getting all the employees kind of on the same page yeah. we were you know testing the menu and all that stuff and then i worked there for for maybe i think maybe four or five months okay and i learned a lot there you know i learned a lot about barbecue but i think i learned more about how to run a, a, a restaurant like a i can imagine big, yeah yeah they're they're great over there so i uh, worked at fijis and then uh, this was when it, it started getting real. Um, you know, I, I moved back to Beaumont from Houston. And uh, in that time, that was when I was really starting to kind of find my groove and, you know, reach out to Michael at Syntex Smokers. And, you know, I really. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. You're going to have a, a one or two pits from him? Yeah, or? I'm going to get two. I'm going to get 2,000 gallons from Michael. Over uh, there. Syntex is like they're a sleeper. A lot of people know about them, but they. Yeah. Jesus, him, yeah, it was it was him, him as that. I don't know if he works with his dad all the time now, but yeah. God, he's just a he's amazing. He's an amazing guy. I've got I got really lucky um, with him, you know, and we built such a good relationship. And, you know, my pit, I ordered my pit probably 18 months ago, you know, wow. and just I've, I've had to push it back a little bit because of just the opening of Redbird and things like yeah. that. Michael's been super cool about that. But I think like being in the right place at the right time you know, syntax is one of those things. Like I was in the right place at the right time. I just liked the, the way his pits looked, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't know anything about Michael. I just knew that his pits looked good, you know, and that was like, okay. You took, you know, it, you I, took a I, good gut. Like that was a smart. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got lucky. It was, you know, I, I, I hit the nail on the coffin with that. And then in the meantime, when I was like kind of ordering the pits and figuring that process out, I was re I reached out to Johnny uh, Jerby over. Oh, the shirt, okay. Jer the shirt you're wearing a Jerby shirt for people that are listening on the podcast. Yeah, he's yeah. wearing a Jerby it, shirt. <laughs> yeah, if anyone's you know watching this or listening in and they're you know wanting to learn about barbecue, especially just like just getting that raw and getting that real information from barbecue, they they got to go follow Johnny uh, uh, Jerby yeah. Barbecue. I'll put I'll put links to his stuff below because yeah, he's just me. an amazing guy. I, yeah, I owe Johnny everything you know because like my foot in the door with Goldie's was Johnny. Oh, and, wow. I didn't know that. Okay. That's great. Yeah. And like, I reached out to him. This was before the list dropped, you know, and he was doing a lot of barbecue consulting um, with a YouTube with owning, you know, Goldie's, he was kind of doing uh, different things. And in his bio, he had like, you know, barbecue consultant. Okay. And, you know, I was watching him, I was watching his YouTube videos and I loved how raw his his youtube videos were i loved how real they were mm -hmm. 
And I connected with him because he's basically my age. He's a couple years younger than me, which I love. I'm like, wow, not only is this guy like killing it, <laughs> yeah, he's here, you know, like, like that's, that says a lot. It's just like, wow. Like I just wanted to, to, to reach out to him. And, you know, we started talking back and forth and. So I he did, was, so he was totally open to that. Oh yeah. He was oh, totally, nice. totally open. And he was like, man, I'd love to help you, you know? And this was when I had just bought like a, smoker on facebook you know and this was when i was just like oh like getting... fakefoot marketplace or something or yeah yeah exactly that and i was just <laughs> kind of getting a feel for barbecue and a feel for everything and me and johnny consulted for months and just back and forth like i'd be smoking a brisket this would be my you know maybe my second brisket ever and i was asking him wow. about yeah it was it's just he would he would text me back immediately about like, hey man you know what's going on with you know what's going on with the fire at 250 you know what do i what temperature do I need to pull and all these different things? You know, I was just trying to learn as much as I could through, through text messages and through the phone. Wow. And, you know, we, we went back and forth for months. And then one day he, he texted me, he was like, Hey man, I think we, we made that top 50 list. <laughs> and I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, dude, awesome. You know, like, hell yeah, that's awesome. You know, I'm like, congrats on the top 50. And he was like, no, so that man. was only like nine, 10. That was, so that was like, like October ish. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. That was wow. October. So yeah, me and Johnny started, I probably started consulting with Johnny in like June or July, okay. a couple months and okay. then back and forth, just building a good relationship. So he had an inkling. I think when I, cause I, like, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of the Goldies guys cause they're all yeah. so awesome. <laughs> and they kind of, I think they, they knew they were up amongst the top. They kind of had a feeling. Cause I, I think that they do what Texas monthly does is they, they do photo shoots, like special photo shoots. Yeah. And so, you know, you're probably top 10, I think, right. but they, yeah. he, he, did he have an inkling that they were close to one or two? Well, I think what happened was the, one of the pics, the picture of the front page was leaked a couple of days before the oh, actual. Oh yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. Sadly, so I think a lot of, people, a lot of, I thought it was fake, but I, uh, I wasn't sure. I thought some people were messing with people. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. And, and I think um, someone on the Texas monthly list maybe said, Hey, y'all might need to get another thousand gallons <laughs> or something like that. That's smart. But That's nice that they would do. <laughs> yeah. They, they I, I think they warned them, but you know, they gave them a little heads up. You know, I think that, those guys are so deserving of the number one spot. Yeah. Johnny was like, Hey man, you know, I think we got number one. And I'm like, wow. You know, I'm telling my dad, I'm telling my girlfriend, I'm telling everyone, Hey, like the guy that I've been texting back <laughs> with, like those guys got number one and they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, that's what he's saying. You know, like yeah. hasn't dropped out yet, but that's what he's saying. And at that point, my dad looked at me, he was like, Hey man, Hey, ask asked him if they need help like oh well, that's smart of him yeah and I was like you know what like I just resigned from my full-time job I'm like I've got really nothing going on yeah, I like, got to lose yeah what do I got to lose so you know I texted Johnny and he, I, within seconds he was like yeah man come on like we, wow. <laughs> we need all the help we can get you know that's because, so nice yeah I, he 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 knew I think he knew and you know he was like hey man come on so that was kind of like my my foot in the door at goldies was just like meeting johnny via instagram and you know i owe a lot to him and i owe a lot to to him being able to say yeah like come up here and help because he didn't know me like yeah. he he took a chance he was just like yeah come on but and also too he must have he must have seen something with that relationship he must have yeah. you know understood your passion for yeah. sure yeah, he he definitely did. You know, we were messaging back and forth for for weeks and weeks. You know, he actually I was sending him pictures of like the smokers to buy. You know, on Facebook, like I was like, hey, you know, should I buy this one? He was like, nah, that one's not that's not it. Or that's you know, cool. yeah, so he was helping me with that process. He helped me. He really he really has helped me like get into you know get into the doors everything. Oh wow! I just yeah. know I, I remember seeing so many photos of you around. And, yeah, and I had talked to Lisa, who was homesick Texan, and oh, we had yeah. talked. We had talked back and forth a little bit about different other things, and then we were. She had mentioned Amir and Redbird, and I had said I was interested, and then she said, "Yeah, you should probably talk to him." And so that's how that's kind of our connection. That's how the barbecue world works. It's a bunch yeah. of friends saying this is that. So I always wondered how you got. Okay, so Johnny was a he was the door essentially. Yeah, he he absolutely was. You know, and and uh, with Lisa she's been great. Like she's been up there. Like when I go up there, she's up there a lot and she's working on something herself. And, 
Yeah, she said she has a secret project. So everyone, stick, <laughs> stay tuned. I'll put her. I'll put a link to her stuff below too. Because there's yeah, something, and I asked her. I said, "Can you tell me?" And she's like, "No, nah, well, <laughs> I'll tell you yeah, later." Yeah. So <laughs> I'll let her tell you. Stay tuned for that. Cool. That's uh, awesome. But it's been it's been great working with her too. You know, she's so knowledgeable. She's got such a defined palate, and she's just yeah. she's in the know when it comes to just food and just being yeah. around that. And you know, I love I've loved working. She's with a great her. writer too. She's been really yeah, she eloquent. Is. So yeah. Yeah, and she's, you know, she's really just been like, she, we, we, everyone bounces ideas off of each other, but, you know, Lisa's like, hey, I think you should do this at Redbird, because I'm trying to put maybe a little Cajun spin on a, maybe a thing or two, or, you know, and she's always kind of bouncing ideas. Oh, that's I, nice. Yeah, she's been, she's been great to work with. So what was that like when you first came on? Like, how, so you, did you come on before the grand, like, not grand opening, like, I want to say, <laughs> like the grand opening after the, the weekend after the list came out, were you there? I was there. Oh, yeah. I oh was man. there, which was like, oh, you know, was I was just like? lived in the moment, you know, I didn't really know what was going on. I was just, I was just doing, you know, I just made that jump. You hadn't worked on, like you had, you I, hadn't cooked, right? I really hadn't cooked that much. Yeah, you, know, you were so probably cooking whole, at the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a whole new thing. And I think just being around the, the environment and the energy and just being around there that first weekend was like, it was just, it was crazy. You what know? was it like? And I, cause I've asked them, but what was it like seeing it from the outside coming in and not realize not probably not realizing how insane was it crazy to see all the reporters and the line, yeah. I think it sold out. I think Johnny had text, like, Oh, he posted something like we're sold out and it hadn't even, the restaurant hadn't even opened yet. And they, he, yeah. he guys just knew there was too many, enough people in line. Cause yeah. the parking lot too was different too. Wasn't they only had the one parking lot, right? Yeah, yeah. They only had the one parking lot. Like the parking lot next door wasn't available at that point. <laughs> and people were parking on the street. Oh we yeah. We were out directing cars. Everyone, you know, it was a uh, it was of like a welcome to the barbecue world for me. You know what I mean? Like people were showing up at 5 a.m. with Bailey's and coffee and you know, and then there was probably four or five different news channels and reporters there. And the line was out the door and, you know, I'm looking at Johnny and Lane and Jalen and they're just, their heads are down. Like, you know, they're, they're seasoning 50 briskets. They're, you know, they're seizing a hundred ribs and, and there's cameras all in their faces, you know, and these guys handle pressure better than anyone I've seen. Yeah. And, you know, going from, I think they were maybe cooking about 20 to 25 briskets a day to 50, 55 <laughs> briskets a day. You know, that's, that's a that, huge like show. That. Yeah. And, you know, nothing prepares you for that until you get there. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you can be as prepared as you want, but once it's there, like they just knew what to do, you know, like they just, they just did it. And the food was coming out amazing that weekend. And, you know, you can tell that they were obviously a little overwhelmed, but that was just a part of like getting that, that accolade and, and getting where they yeah. are, you know, and that weekend was like an eye opener for me of just like what barbecue is about you know, and what barbecue can bring, like people were driving in from out of state, flying in from out of state, yeah. you know, they had driven 10 hours, you know, they had flown in and, and, you know, it's, it was crazy. And I was just, I was just soaking it all in, you know, taking as many pictures as I could and just talking to many as people as I could and just trying to make myself useful. You know, I didn't want to be in the way at, during that week. Yeah, that's probably all you wanted to do was not be yeah. in the way. Right? I didn't want to be in the way, you know, I helped them as they could as I could have, you know, I helped him as much as I uh, could have at that time. Right. Yeah. But for me, it was just being able to be there and experience that was like priceless. Yeah. That's a, that's a once in a lifetime experience really. Because oh, yeah. That's something unless red bird down the, you know, three or four yeah. years from now, <laughs> gets number one or not top 10, but it's, it's something that I, I, it's, it's fascinating. And all those guys, most of those guys have all worked at places that were you know big places so they had cameras in front of them like people with their phones yeah. because i always think about how fascinating it is with the barbecue world that people are filming everything or taking pictures of everything and i guess you have to eventually get used to that scenario because you can't be the chef or the person that's not at least out there anymore it's it's yeah no it's for part sure. of the, it's always part of the whole thing i guess yeah no you're absolutely right you know like Jalen, he worked at freedman's he's worked at bangers and then you got Lane, he's worked at Freeman's, he worked at Mickaway's. And then Johnny, he worked at Law Barbecue, he worked at Valentina's, and he worked at Franklin's. So these guys were very, very well sound um, in terms of just knowing what to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that experience, all of that, 
plus just coming together is was a, a recipe for success yeah and even chuck chuck has worked around a lot oh of yeah that chuck's yeah. Worked, she worked at franklin too yeah she worked at franklin for a while and chuck is a, is a huge asset at goldies you know and, and she just had a, a pop-up last weekend and it looked amazing i wasn't able to make it but yeah it looked, I, it looked awesome yeah, yeah i love chuck i've I've been super blessed to be able to be around all of them. And I've also been super blessed to be able to, to work with each and every one of them one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, that's huge. Oh, yeah. that's really nice. I didn't know. Yeah. I was going to ask like how that kind of dynamic worked. Wow. Yeah. So like, you know, for the longest time I was going up there and I was working with Johnny, uh, just whatever he needed. Hey, mm -hmm. I, I got there. I'm like, Johnny, what do you need? And then I started developing a good relationship with Lane. And this was when Lane was working that rib shift where he'd have to get there at like midnight to, you know, midnight to maybe 2 p.m. the next day. And I was showing up there. I wasn't getting there at midnight because like I, I wasn't mentally prepared like these guys were. Like I was showing up at like 2 a.m., you know, 3 a.m. I was getting there when I when I could, you know. Yeah. Um, so working with Lane was great. Working at the rib shift with Lane and we started developing a really good relationship. And what is can you what is Lane like and how is that relationship with Lane? Honestly. Yeah he i'm probably the closest to lane out of all of them and, and it's because lane has really taken me under his wing and he's he's been super super helpful on every front from just teaching me how to build a fire to teaching me how to trim a brisket every single thing every aspect of goldies lane has taught me wow. and like he's at, at one point listen to this so at one point like you know these guys work like 100 hours a week <laughs> yeah i know like, they're working all day, every day. Their, their only days off are Mondays where, you know, they're bringing in the order Mondays, making sure everything's good. And then Tuesdays they're trimming and things, but Mondays is really their day off. And me and Lane have developed such a good relationship that he's texting me. He's like, Hey man, can you, like, I'm like, Hey, I'm coming up Wednesday. He's like, nah, Hey, can you get up here Monday? Bring, you know, go to central market or go wherever, bring, bring ingredients and we'll work on your recipes on Monday. Oh. And I'm like, wow, wow. wow. Yeah. You know, it's like, absolutely. You know, and, and me and him have sat up there for, I'm talking hours and hours and hours, just working on the slaw recipe, working on the potato salad and his palate. Yeah. I've heard, I was going to say, I've heard his palate is amazing. Oh my God. It's so defined. He is just so dialed in on recipe building and wanting to make things better. You know, what does it need? What do you, what is it missing? Like, Lane has opened my 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 world to wow. just a different aspect of that's how so good to hear. I've I've heard only great things and I've talked to Lane before, but it's just it's yeah. so that's so nice to hear because I feel like he's like the secret glue that people don't maybe realize. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, he absolutely is. I mean, he is one of the most I mean, they're all super valuable, you know. That that's what makes Goldie so special is that all of them bring so much to the table you know, all of them are so dialed in, all of them are so knowledgeable about barbecue in general. But yeah, Lane has been tremendously helpful for me That's and huge. Redford and my confidence and just, you know, hey, this is what you need to do. Hey, this is what I think you should do. Like, and the, the teaching style of the Goldies team is like, is how I want Redbird to be. Okay. You know, there's, at Goldies, you, you can't really make a mistake you can just do it differently. Like, like if I, I've made many mistakes, you know, I've, I dropped a whole rack of beef ribs one time and, you know, I'm carrying this, this tray. Oh man. And, you know, I'm working behind the line lanes cutting. I'm, I'm giving him beef ribs. I'm giving brisket. I'm giving him everything. And this was like my third weekend up there, you know, I'm just like thrown into the trenches and oh. he, uh, you know, I'm holding this, the sheet tray and it's got tallow and it's hot. And it's slippery back there because there's tallow, you know, kind of everywhere. And there's just, you know, everything's kind of, there's a ton of things going on <laughs> and I'm carrying it to put it up, to, up there. And it just falls because oh. it was hot. It was slippery. I think I, I fell over something and I just dropped it. You know, Lane looked at me and this was mid service. I mean, this was like, so there's people all the rap. Oh yeah. Like this was it, you know? And, he was like, bro, it's all good. Like, it's all good. We picked them up. And I mean, unfortunately they weren't wrapped. So we had to throw the whole rack, the whole tray of beef ribs away. But the way that the, he handled that was, was mind blowing. Like he, he wasn't mad. It wasn't something like he, he was just like, Hey man, it's all good. It happens. You know? And like, that was something that carried with me so, so big. Cause it was like probably 
thousand dollars worth of beef ribs you know we had wow. we, we 86 the beef ribs after that like but that's, that's that yeah, because so yeah much. for people that might know that's one of the most expensive items to yeah <laughs> it is it is you know and after service like he was like man it's all good you know you just gotta because yeah, i'm sure your heart sank i'm sure you oh. just <laughs> you, you know just wanted like, to like crawl and get out <laughs> and it's yeah. yeah that was like the first time i had like real responsibility there and i dropped the ball but it's yeah, all but you but <laughs> the way that he the way that he handled it and probably the way that he handled it after yeah. made you real like you're not gonna do you wouldn't do that again and you'd be yeah you'd realize that this was yeah yeah that 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 was like that was something that I really I really took away from Lane but with, did you get a chance to, so you said do you get a chance to work with Jalen too oh yeah like you know Jalen has been someone that's really helped me develop my menu too and he's been someone that knows everything about all processes you know so i'm like hey jalen you know what sh what should i do here you know hey the sausage is is this temp when do i need to pull it like he knows he knows everything you know i've, I've gotten the opportunity to work with all of them like i'd mentioned and with jalen i got the opportunity to work with him pulling briskets seeing how he wraps seeing what he looks for in the brisket Huge. you know versus what chuck looks for versus what lane looks for you know and i think that's something about barbecue that's so special is like all of them have very similar ways of doing things, but they all have like a, a little different way of doing this. Or like doing a nuance it. that's there. Yeah, like they're like their nuance, right? And like oh, for Jalen, Jalen is just super, super chill, but he's also super dialed in. Like he knows everything about the barbecue. And for me, like I've learned so much from Jalen, especially like sausage. Jalen's super good with sausage and just knowing, you know, kind of how to do this and how to do that. And my thing with Jalen is like, not only do I think that he's like super valuable, but he's just one of the nicest guys. So nice. You know, like, like, so he nice. is so nice. His energy is super good. Like he's always just willing to to listen. He's always willing to help. And you know, they don't have to be like that. No. You know what I mean? Like they don't have to to welcome me in. They didn't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And you know, all of them have. Like it's not like I don't get bad energy or bad vibes or I've never once been there and been like, you know, they don't want me here. You know, like, hey, you know, what am I doing here? Like, and you're an outsider. Like, uh, yeah, you, I am. You didn't I, come I, up the ranks with them. You didn't. Yeah, you weren't. Yeah, I, I, exactly. You know, I'm, I'm, I was an outsider. I feel like more now I'm, I'm slowly starting to become like, you know, a part of their family. That's awesome. Yeah. But for Jalen, you know, I connected with him immediately and he's just so spot on. So on, they could all like all those guys can do everything right yeah everything. that's a huge everything. thing that's a big deal yeah like all of them know how to trim brisket all of them know how to make bread all of them know how to you know season ribs smoke ribs you know season turkey smoke turkey it's like if if lane wasn't there one weekend or johnny wasn't there one weekend or Jalen wasn't there one weekend like they would still be able to operate at a very high level because that's, all of them know how to do everything which is that's super great important. information for you to have Oh yeah. Yeah. And like, there's nothing in this world that could have prepared me more for Redbird than working at Goldie's like nothing, you know, like I think that I was in the right place at the right time. Like this is the, the best experience I've ever had. And, you know, I, like when I was leaving last time I looked at J uh, Jalen and I looked at Lane and I looked at Johnny and Chuck and I, I literally told them, I'm like, this is the best experience of my life. Wow. You know, like you guys, letting me come up here just like I don't even ask anymore I just show up <laughs> you know what I mean like and they're just so welcoming and you know I've worked we we all have worked really hard but I've worked really hard up there you know and I've represented their brand well like you know I've worked the door many times and you know that's one of my favorite things doing up there is just talking to customers and you know asking them how they're you know how the food was because I know the answer I just want to hear that yeah. hear the reaction but you know, I've I'm been very, able, you probably haven't heard people say I didn't like it. Yeah. I've never heard that. <laughs> no, I can't I'm, imagine. I'm right. Yeah. I'm serious. I've never heard that. Um, but I think my, the best experience that I've had working up there is they've given me the opportunity to, to just jump in and do it a couple weekends ago. You know, there was a couple YouTubers up there. Yeah, I was, I was actually reading my mind. I was just going to ask about that. Yeah, Mad Scientist was up there. Jeremy and his wife, uh, really, really great people. Then you had Chud's Barbecue. Uh, then you had Daniel Vaughn came up there, and they they did a, a YouTube video on on different ways to cook a brisket. Uh, yeah, that's great. Yeah, wrapping it in foil like a foil boat. 
uh, doing it like a paper wrap or just, you know, cooking it all the way through with no wrap. It was a blind tasting or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a blind tasting, you know. Yeah. And the, the really cool thing about that was like, they were all doing the YouTube videos and they were really, you know, focused on that. Well, I was up there too. And, you know, this was the first time that like, they've like, they were like, Hey, we need you to watch the fire, all three fires today, like from start to finish. And like, the, the, these are like the 50 briskets that we're, <laughs> we're, you know, we're serving, you know, tomorrow. And like, it, it clicked to me there that, you know, these guys trust me, mm -hmm. you know, guys are confident in me to be watching their fires and building their fires and, you know, making sure that the briskets are looking good and making sure that, you know, I was like, wow. Like, you know, and I really, I, I cooked the, I cooked them the entire day. You know, I pulled them a chuck at the end and, you know, I felt really like that, that day was probably that weekend was probably the best weekend that I've been up there. It's just, I, I gained so much confidence. That, that I was going to say, it probably gives you a lot of confidence for your, for going forward. Yeah. And Johnny's always looking at me. He's like, bro, you got it. He's like, you're going off, you know? And he's like, he's like, you're good. Like, just you know, watch those fires. You're good. And I'm like, hearing that from Johnny was like, just like all I needed to hear. You know what I mean? And, you know, for me, like that experience up at Goldie's and working with Jalen and working with Chuck and being able to really just ask them, I mean, they're open books. Yeah. And you have like, you have an opportunity. Well, I mean, you've had an opportunity like first off with fee just going there, but then now with, yeah. with this to, you know, pick their brains, even, even if it's just got getting, watching them, but you're learning. So like something that a lot of people, and, and I know they are starting to do these classes. And so how was that class? Were you there? You were there, right? Cause didn't, yeah. I watched something you introduced, did they let, did you start the class or something or did you? Yeah. 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 I actually, I actually started the class. Um, you know, they just wanted me to kind of give an introduction to them and, you know, that's cool. I'm, I'm really good. Like they see me talkative, really talking with customers. And mm -hmm. I think that's a, like a strong suit that I have. So, you know, they just wanted to make sure that the, the class was, was great. And it turned out awesome, man. Yeah. What was that class like? It was awesome. And I was learning things that, you know, I've been working up there for 10 months and <laughs> I'm looking around, I'm like, dang, I'm learning stuff, you know? And like, that's the, that's the cool thing about it is like, you're always learning and you're always mm -hmm. trying to get better. But for the barbecue class, I mean, it was amazing. I mean, the turnout was amazing. The the information that they're giving, you know, these guys are are flying down from Washington, you know, flying from Florida, you know, they have their own barbecue joints. And, you know, when you go to that class, you leave there confident knowing how to smoke a brisket, knowing how to smoke pork ribs, you know, knowing what to look for. I mean, the, the class showed you everything. Not only did you get to eat the food, you got the merch. But I think the best thing about the class is being being able to be around like Lane and Johnny and Jalen and Chuck. Yeah, I could see like I've seen photos from it and it looked very hands on. Oh, yeah. And like that was everything, you know, and Ronnie Killen was there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Wasn't was uh, Wayne was there, right? Wayne Mueller was there. Yeah, that was awesome as well. You know, <laughs> seeing those guys come to to the Goldies class. Yeah, like icons there. Yeah, they're, you know, and and that's something that people don't understand about these, you know, the Goldie's crew is like, they made history with getting number one and how mm -hmm. they did, you know, and like, I'm very biased, obviously, but I've been around Texas and I've been trying other barbecue, you know, we've gone really everywhere. Like that's something about Lane too. He, he's, he's, they all want to, not just Lane, but Lane, Johnny, Chuck, Jalen, they're always wanting to go to other spots and try their stuff. Like, yeah, no, I think I, I forget who it was. Maybe Jalen, when I asked him, what, what else, what other food do you like? He's like, well, we, we go get barbecue. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we go support, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm always trying to find something better than Goldie's, you know, you're always just, you know, you, you are looking for it. Yeah. And, you know, I've been around Texas and I haven't, I haven't found it. Yeah. No. Uh, you know, it kind of is what it is. I think, I think what they're doing and I think why they got number one uh, shows and, you know, the, the effort that they put in, you know, everything is made in house. Everything is made from scratch. Being down to, like you said, the bread, everything. Yeah. Yeah. When people find out that the bread's homemade, they're, they're mind blown. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. you, you should just see the customers. They're like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> but I think that like when, when some people get number one, you know, obviously there's going to be a crowd that are like, ah, you know, yeah. Right. Or, you know, I, in this case, in this situation, like they totally deserved number one.
Yeah. You know, and if you haven't been up there, I, you know, I highly recommend you, you making your way, you know, once you get that opportunity, yeah. um, because it's definitely the best tray of barbecue in, in Texas. Were you talking to me or to people listening to this? Because uh, oh. <laughs> I haven't, yeah. sadly, I haven't, but, uh, and I yeah, think if you're listening to this, but yeah, no, it's, I, yeah, yeah, I couldn't just, and just to, to, to be around that, the whole situation, it's like the food is spectacular. And then it seems like a great experience. Yeah. And, you know, being up there, I've met so many people in barbecue. What I love about Lane and what I love about all of them is like when when we're, I'm talking to a customer and one of them is around, they're looking at the customer telling them, hey, Amir's opening up a barbecue a barbecue joint in Port Nature's down in the Beaumont area. Oh, you got to go. You know, like anytime Lane introduces me to Ronnie Killen or Tootsie or, or you know, whoever. He's like, hey, this is my friend Amir. He's been working with us. He's opening up a barbecue joint called Redbird. Like, wow. these guys and Chuck, they are like, they want. That's to so speak. supportive. Man. It's crazy. It's oh, crazy. did you, when when Daniel was there for the YouTube thing, did you get a chance to talk to him at all? I did. I got a chance to talk to him, which was awesome. I was the one, I was telling you a minute ago that I was the one that would cook the briskets the day before. Yeah. And so Daniel was there and, and he did the the taste testing, you know, with the three different ways and. And then he came back the next day and ate, ate a tray of barbecue. Oh. Yeah. And uh, the briskets that he ate, the brisket that he ate was the brisket that I cooked. Uh, oh. Yeah. So I think Lane or, or Johnny may have said, hey, Daniel, you're eating a Redbird brisket. And, um, you know, I, I got to talk to him for a little bit. And he, um, he said, hey, I'm following your page but you don't have any posts. And I was like, yeah, you know, I haven't posted anything yet. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. You don't have, a, I was going to mention, there's not a lot of photos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he was like, uh, you need to change that. So I said, yes, sir. And so <laughs> I just, uh, if Daniel I, gives you advice, yes, you should take it. Exactly that. So, you know, I started posting and meeting him was awesome. You know, and like, that's cool. That's another thing is like, I wouldn't have been able to meet him and mad scientists and, you know, all of these amazing people in barbecue without this experience at Gold. Mm-hmm. You know, so like I, the success of Redbird and where Redbird's going and the vision that Redbird has is really all on, all, all from them. Yeah. You know, like the inspiration is from them, kind of how I want my menu to be is from them, you know, how I'm going to be cooking my briskets and how I'm going to be seasoning them. And, you know, it's all coming from, from inspiration from them. Well, let's talk, let's talk about Redbird and, and also too. And I'm really curious, how did you get the name Redbird? That's a great name. I just didn't, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of people have asked that. And when I was trying to figure out the name of the barbecue joint, I was kind of, I was struggling with the name. I really was, you know, my nickname, where I'm from, like a lot of people, my dad especially, called me Ruby. Um, And I wanted, at first I wanted it to be called Ruby's Barbecue um, because that's just who I am. And that's just, (laughs) yeah. If you know me, you know my nickname's Ruby, you know, and that was special to me. And but then I started kind of feeding it off people and like, hey, you know, what do you think about Ruby's barbecue? And most people were like, I like it, but it sounds too close to Rudy's. It does. It does, you know. And I was like, you know what, you're right. And so I went back to the drawing board and I was struggling with it. I really was, you know. And my stepbrother, he passed away a couple years ago, oh. uh, really unexpectedly. And I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it was, it was, it was really sad. And, you know, for me, when I was trying to figure out out the name of the barbecue joint, um, I started thinking like deeper, you know, and I I started to really think about why I'm doing this, like what drives me, what motivates me. I was struggling with the name a little bit, but then I started thinking about what people see when someone closest you, close to you passes away. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, for me, I see feathers a lot. You know, I'm always seeing feathers. I'm always, and that's a sign of mm-hmm. someone that's close to you that passed away. It's like, why is this random feather right here? You know, and, and as I was, as I was thinking, like, I've always seen red birds as, as soon as my stepbrother passed away, I've seen red birds a lot. Huh. And, you know, and, and that's a sign of like someone being close, close to you and someone that's passed, um, being close around, being around. Yeah, like no, when when my father passed away, we started seeing hummingbirds a lot. Like, exactly that. In order to matter, and like coming really close to us, my mom has this connection with them, and she thinks whenever she sees a hummingbird that it's my dad coming to say hi or stopping exactly. by. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. You know, and I was struggling with the name so much, and 
I told my fiance, I was like, cause I was cooking briskets at my dad's one day and I was just struggling. And, you know, I, I started to think about naming it Redbird. And I told her, I said, if I see a Redbird today, that's the name of the, that's going to be the name of the barbecue joint. And within like 20 minutes of me smoking a brisket at my dad's, here comes a, a Redbird flying over me. Oh my gosh. And, you know, for me, it's like, the, the name behind Redbird means so much to me that that is like a driving factor for me. And, you know, for my stepmom, Stephanie, you know, that mean, that meant the world to her, yeah. you know, and there's, there's nothing that can bring him back, but having this honoring him is, is something that I'm super proud of. What did she think when you mentioned it to her? She cried and she was just, yeah. you know, she sees Redbirds all the time. We all see Redbirds all the time. Like when I'm up at Goldie's in Fort Worth, I'm driving down Dick Price Road and I see a, you know, a Redbird fly <laughs> in my head. You know, I'm smoking briskets late night. I see a Redbird, you know, it's, it's crazy. Wow. You know, I'm driving down the highway and I see a Redbird. So it's like, when I see a Redbird, I know I'm in, I'm where I'm supposed to be. And I know this vision is, is what I'm supposed to be doing. And he'll be a part of it. Absolutely. That's, that's, Absolutely. means a lot. Wow. That's, yeah, Thank you, you know, for sharing of, that. That's no, for sure. A lot of people have you know reached out, and um, this is kind of the first time I, I've really talked about the Redbird name and you know why it's called Redbird. But it's really a dedication to my stepbrother that's passed, and you know that is like that is all I need. That's mm -hmm. all I need to know. And you know now it's it's time to focus on the food and just making sure that the experience when people come, it's the best experience that that I can give them. Do you have a location already? Yeah, we do have a location. Um, we found a spot down on Port H's Avenue, which is like probably the oldest road in Port H's. So that's really cool. <laughs> it has some history down there. There's some cool spots down there. Okay. Found a spot. Now we're, you know, we're in the process of um, getting all the plans approved and, and getting yeah, everything. It, takes time. it does take time, you know, and that's kind of something that I was inexperienced with. I didn't know how much time it was going to take. I thought I was already going to be open. <laughs> <laughs> But I think it's kind of a blessing in disguise and I'm not yet just because I'm still learning when I go up to, to Fort Worth to, uh, at Goldie's. I'm still, you know, developing the menu. You know, I'm still perfecting the craft. And, and you know, you really can't ever perfect it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're constantly learning and you're constantly getting better. But I think this time that I've had has really given me that opportunity to learn and just soak it in and meet more people and, you know, there is a rush on it. I want to be open as soon as possible. But at the same time, it's like, I don't want this experience with Goldie's and, and, yeah, and I know. It. you know, so I'm, I'm pushing it really hard. I think probably here in the next six months, you know, we'll have something. We'll probably be open here in the next six, seven months. So we're, if we're, we're August now, you're looking what, like probably February, March ish. Or yeah. I'd April? say maybe March, March, April ish. Okay. Or so yeah, I think that'd be a good time frame, a uh, realistic time frame now, mm -hmm. but you know, that's just going to be depending on, you know, when we can get everything approved. Like we're going to be building a, a so how do you envision? Oh, you're building a smokehouse. Okay. I interrupted yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it, we're, no, you're good. Um, <laughs> we're going to be building a smokehouse in the back. Also, I'm going to be building like a meat room where it has like, um, like that's where the raw meat goes, you know, that's where oh, the, designated just for that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So Smart. it's like, yeah. So trimming briskets in the meat room, that'll be, you know, kind of attached to the, the outside, um, uh, trimming ribs, you know, making sausage, like all the raw meats, all the meats will stay in the meat room. They won't go into the main kitchen. So I thought that was something that, that would be useful, and then we're having an, a little area for like a designated baking area. We're going to make everything from scratch as well. Um, I'm taking that one from the Goldie's plate. <laughs> that's, that's smart. Yeah, you should. Yeah, I think that's you know, that's I mean, huge. Wow. It, it's huge. And I, I think that that's something that separates them, just making everything from, from scratch, you know, from their mayo and their potato salad uh, to the pickles, to the sauce. Oh, they make their own mayo. I forgot about that. Yeah, they make their own mayonnaise. Um, you know, they really make everything from scratch. So that's like, that's something that I'm going to be taking away from, from my experience. And, you know, before that, I, I, there's no way I'd be, be making my bread in-house. You know, there's no way I'd be doing these different things. But now I, I see how everything's happening. And I think that I'm going to be able to make it happen. And the reason I think that is because we're only going to be open up on weekends. So it'll be we're, open on Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Saturday, Sunday? Yeah, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Um, and I think that that's a, a really smart move 
in barbecue. Mm-hmm. Just but, see, because- but like also you saying that if people are listening, that doesn't just mean you get four days off. It's <laughs> right. <laughs> can, you, can, you, can, you, can you dispel that myth? People think that that is for sure. People think that, you know, if you're only, only, only open on the weekends, like what are you doing during the week? But you know, what I'll tell to those people is like, you have to prep right? You have to, when you're making everything from scratch, it has to be prepped right. It has to be right. Um, you know, so you're trimming briskets on Tuesdays. You're, you're, you're making sauces on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You're making bread. You're making pickles. You know, you're doing all these different things. And so when Friday, Saturday, Sunday come, everything is dialed in. Everything is like, wow. Yeah. You know, and I think it's really hard to keep a consistent product six, seven days a week. Yeah. You know, I, I just think like, I think that's what I think. I don't, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there that are, are doing it successfully, but for me, weekends only, I'm taking that one from the Goldie's yeah. playbook, but I think that that's a, they, they were spot on when they decided to do that. Yeah. There's only, there's a lot of places that are either open three days a week or four days a week. That's just, right. it doesn't make sense. Like Monday, Tuesdays are tough days, unless you're in a place that has a lot of tourism or has a certain <laughs> kind of business from conventions or th- just certain things that make sense to be open on a Monday or Tuesday. So do you have an idea? Because you said you, you had talked about menu building with Lane. Do you have an idea in your mind as to what the menu is going to be? I have a good idea. I've got some good stuff in the works. Mm-hmm. You know, I think working at Goldie's has really helped me develop my menu, my vision for my menu. With Lane, he is like, all right, what are you doing with your potato salad? All right, what are you doing with your slaw? You know, what are you doing differently? What can we do differently to, you know, and that wow. has helped me so much. Just like the way that he develops recipes and the way that he thinks is on another level. <laughs> like he knows if you're adding 20 pounds of potatoes, it needs this much salt. You know, if he knows if you're making sausage and you're making 20 pounds of sausage, it needs this much salt, it needs this much this. And so watching him and, and being able to see how he does it, has really helped me grow, helped me learn so much. So for my menu, you know, I'm going to keep it super classic. Okay. Um, keep it super classic, but I also think that I'm going to put my own little spin on it. Um, you know, where I'm from, Beaumont area, um, there's a lot of Cajun influence. Mm-hmm. You know, so I think I might do maybe a Cajun style side, something like that. That's smart. Yeah. And, you know, with my stepmom and my stepbrother, you know, their side of the family is Vietnamese. So, ah. I want to do something kind of Vietnamese or something like that uh, within the menu, but just keep everything very classic, but maybe have a something that that really showcases their culture and wow. you know, what they're about to. So I have a couple of things in the works. That's cool. No, that's really great. And then uh, the, the way that people have like kept with the classics, but then also verged out to like their culture and the specific and brought their culture into barbecue it works. If you, if you really, you know, if, if your heart's into it, you could really make interesting combinations that. No. Yeah. That's absolutely. exciting. Yeah. That's another thing I've been working on my sausage with lane. We've been working on a different style of sausage uh, for, for that Asian style. Um, yeah. That'd be interesting to bring up. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have been, it all the time, but kind of. Exactly. Maybe on Saturday, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like that, you know, just to, just to be different, mm-hmm. you know, just to, sh- to showcase something different. The start of Redbird is going to be, you know, maybe five or six meats, maybe three, four or five sides, a couple desserts, keep everything really tight and just really focused and dialed in. And, and as we develop and we grow, you know, we'll, we'll introduce more things later on and, you know, play around with different things. Uh, but for the most part, I think that keeping it super classic is the way to go, you know, so that's, that's what we'll do. Wow. And so you're going to have two Centex pits. Yeah. And then will you have indoor and outdoor seating or how is like, do you have it? How is it? Yeah. yeah. So we'll have like, we'll have some indoor seating and some outdoor seating. Okay. Uh, and with the Syntex pits, you know, I, or, I, I reached out to Michael like 16 months, you know, almost like two years ago. And, you know, we've developed such a good relationship. I've been able to go out to, to his shop. Uh, um, I want to go to the shop so badly. Uh, that's so cool. Yeah. It, it was, it was super cool out there. He's, you know, so inviting and so welcoming. <laughs> Got to meet his dad out there. It's, it's Michael full time. Uh, his dad's helping as well. Yeah. Um, he may have hired some people. I'm not too sure about that, but mm-hmm. I love his pits. Um, you know, I've been smoking on a mill scale at Goldie's, which, mm-hmm. you know, mill scale guys are amazing and all of the uh, Goldie's. Yeah. I mean, mill scale is great. And, you know, for me, 
I'm so lucky that I've been able to develop a relationship with Michael and, you know, been able to, you know, really develop that style of smoker. And just, it's what Michael is doing is amazing. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like you said, I think, he, I think some people are kind of sleeping on him, mm -hmm. but you know, he's on the rise for sure. And I love to see it. I'm excited to rep his brand. Oh, I really, yeah. yeah, I'm excited to, to hopefully one day maybe be a brand ambassador for, for Syntex. <laughs> you're uh, listening, yeah. Michael. <laughs> yeah. If you're listening to Michael, man, you know, hook me up with that one. He's just a kind, kind guy. And he, he's one of those guys too, that is like it, his, his job is his job. Like his, his job isn't social media. His job isn't like answering like tons and tons of like texts and things. Like he's just focused on what he does in this business. And he cares so much about welding and it's. Yeah. He's, yeah. Like, he, that's what I love about his pits is like, he's building all of them with his bare hands and he is so detailed and so he is detailed. so, yeah. And, and that's what I love about the Syntex smokers is like, they're always so detailed and they're always, they, they're, they're built amazing. You know, I got a chance to go by Danes in uh, Fort Worth um, and he has a Syntex. So he was showing me their Syntex and that was kind of the first time that I'd seen a Syntex other than being at Michael's shop and, you know, Dane, <laughs> You know, so it was really cool just to kind of see, um, you know, people out there using Syntex. And, well, I know um, that uh, I mean, that Ernest at Burnt Bean, have you seen that cooker that he has? That's oh, yeah. beautiful. Yeah, I'm excited just to, to rep the Syntex brand. Wow, that's really cool. So then do you, but you get those pits prior to, like, obviously prior to opening, but how will you get a, ch you'll get a chance to test them and, like, play yeah. with them and, like, get a chance to, like, to get used to them and not test them, like, get used to them, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's the thing about barbecue is like every pit is different. Mm -hmm. You have to learn that pit. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, once those pits come in, I'm uh, going to spend a lot of time smoking on them, um, you know, really developing the red bird meats, really developing, you know, how the syntax is smoking. And, you know, I think that that's, that's going to be a really cool uh, process of what's got, what I've got coming up. Wow. Are you going to be doing any pop-ups prior to opening? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think, right. um, I think I'm going to probably do a couple, uh, before the end of the year. Um, you know, Lane, all of those Goldies guys have kind of been on my, my, on me a little <laughs> bit about, uh, doing a pop-up, you know, and then for me, I've just wanted to keep learning, you know, I've just wanted to, to, to keep learning from them and, you know, be confident in myself before mm -hmm. I just kind of, you know, showcase the food. I just want, you know, I want, wanted to be prepared. You know, I wanted to have that experience. That was the reason why I, you know, one of the reasons that I worked at Fijis is like, I just needed some experience. And then, you know, working at Goldie's and developing those relationships. Like I look at those guys as like my friends now, like they're, mm -hmm. I'm inviting them to my wedding. Like, <laughs> like, like they, nice. they think I'm joking when I'm telling them that, but I am inviting them to my wedding, you know? And like that to me has, has been the most valuable take from this. Yeah. It's just, I've, I've gained like really good friends from it that is a big influence on, on what Redbird's, you know, Redbird's all about. So, so you will have probably one or two possibly by the end of the year, will they be over in Fort Worth or will they be in Beaumont or? or uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I, it would be really cool to do one maybe at the Goldie's parking lot or something like that. You know, having those guys there to, to make sure everything's going smooth. Yeah, it would be it would be a nice like first time because you know because because yeah. Chuck has done her pop ups and she's done them yeah. there and then but also uh, in other places. But she also had the experience prior to yeah to, to work to being with Goldie. So you have it, this is this would be like your first you know my first like showcase, yeah. which is yeah yeah yeah. And I'm kind of nervous about it. You know what I mean? But I'm excited. As I think well. you'll do well. Like you've learned a lot and you know, and we'll all yeah. support, we'll all support you. And if I can come out, I will, but if not, I'll, I'll spread the word. And I know people will want, they'll be curious. And they've, a lot of people have seen you. People have even asked me who's Amir. Like I've seen them. At yeah. Goals. And so there's people are curious. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, I know that there's a lot of, there's going to be a lot of like hype and expectations, you know, so I just want to be really laser focused make sure everything really, you know, tastes yeah. really good. And that is why I think like us not being open yet has been a blessing. Just yeah. being able to be up there and learn has been, um, has been a, such a, such a cool experience for me. Wow. This is so, I'm so excited. And this is, this is yeah. great to, and it's great to get insight into because a lot of people are curious about Goldie's and, you know, 
there's Johnny's out there, like people that they're out there and, and people see and there's like Jerby has like he has his Jerby page, his uh Jerby YouTube site. So he so there's a lot of stuff. So hearing it from your side and hearing and humanizing it and letting people know what it's what it was like to, you know, go through that with Goldies and learn so much and learn how close you've gotten. And and now because people probably have heard about Redbird, but they they don't really they didn't really know. And so yeah. I hope th- I hope this gives them some insight into it and you know gets them excited and gets them following you and I'll put all your social media below. What is what is all the social media? Yeah, so we're on Instagram and Facebook, uh Redbird BBQ. Uh yeah, go follow us. You know, I'm going to be posting more and I think that there's going to be some exciting stuff here in the next, you know, maybe 6 to 8 months. Nice. I'm excited and you know, and this this will be out there too, so people will get a chance to see this. And sure. uh, I is there anything that we miss? Is there anything that you want people to know prior to us uh, signing off? Is there anything? Well, I will say that people that are, are listening and watching in, um, if you haven't been out to Goldie's, you have to go check them out. Um, you know what they've done and, and what they're doing in barbecue. They've changed the game of barbecue. Yeah. Like they they have they they disrupted the the game of barbecue. <laughs> That's a good term for it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they truly did. And the fact that I'm able to be up there with them is still just something that I'm so, I'm just so grateful for, you know, and it still kind of blows my mind. And I would say that people listening in, if you haven't gotten the chance to go out there, you have to make it out there. Like what would you recommend? What would you recommend for coming? What time on Like people are curious, like Friday, I've talked to all of them about that, but what is it like currently? You know, every day is pretty busy. Um, every day is really busy, actually. <laughs> but um, I would say your best bet is either getting there maybe on Fridays, you know, maybe 9.30, okay. maybe 10 a.m. on Fridays. I'd say Saturdays are going to be their busiest days. Um, you know, Saturdays are, are just, it's just good energy. You know, you're going to stand in line no matter what. Yeah. But just, just come prepared to stand in line. It's going to be worth it. There's never been one person tell me that it's not worth it. And then Sundays are pretty chill days. I would okay. say coming out maybe on sunday uh come out with the family and, and it'll be a really good experience so on a saturday would you say come at eight o'clock or so or you know seven people are there at two or three probably but. yeah people are there people <laughs> get there at crazy hours on saturdays i would say yeah maybe show up at 8 30 9 o'clock okay um that's not bad it's it's really not bad you know and that's another thing i've learned from them is like they're so focused on making sure that the line moves quickly that's and, important and, yeah it's so important like their line it moves fast and, you know, don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated about, by when you see a line, you know, just come out and you're going to have the best barbecue you've ever had. I mean, it, it really is true. And so, you know, I, I encourage everyone to just, if they haven't um, go, go check them out and go talk to them because they're all going to be there. And that's another thing I love about Goldie's is like, when you go up there, you're going to see Jalen, you're going to see Lane, you're going to see Johnny, you're going to see Chuck, you're going to see all of them touching the food, making sure that, the, you know, they're, that's who's cooking the food, you know, and I think that's another reason why they're, they're the number one spot is because like, they're the ones that are cooking the food. They're the ones that are, are there on a daily basis. Like, you know, getting the quality, out, the quality control is there at the all times. Quality so. control is there. And that's like, you know, they, they eat trays all the time before service and they're always, you know, what y'all think about this? You know, what does this need? They're always evolving. Oh, kind of like a family meal ish kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's family smart. Meal. I didn't know a lot of places did that. Okay. I don't think a lot of places do that. Mm. I really, yeah. They'll cut a full tray. Wow. You know, it will sit down. Everyone will sit down maybe t- 10 o'clock, 10 30. Uh, and we'll try everything, you know? And, um, I think that's something that is so special about Goldie's is like, they are the ones cooking the food. They are the ones going to be there. And, you know, if you haven't been out there, I highly recommend go and check them out. And do you recommend ordering everything? <laughs> yes. I was going to say, what's your favorite thing? But I, I think, I'd you know, order everything. I think that my favorite thing, yeah, I'd say order everything. I think my favorite thing probably is going to be their pork ribs. Um, their rib glaze is like, it's unbeatable. I mean, you know, it, it really is. I think their, their ribs are, are, are a must have. Obviously the brisket's a must have. Um, and then the turkey, the turkey is obviously stepped on yeah. too. So I definitely, but, but, but perfect. But right now, currently your favorite thing is pork ribs. And then if I yeah. ask in a month from now, you'd be like, it could be something else. Yeah, it could be something else. <laughs> it might not change, but, um, well, that's I, I get a little bit of everything. 
um, and make sure to get some of that homemade bread. Ah, that's a, that's so great. Well, Amir, thank you so much. I'm so excited about the potential. Like I love talking to people at this stage in their career and we'll do a, we'll do a part two after yeah. you've opened or right before you open or something. So that way I love that. you could check in, but this is nice because this will be nice too for you because this is a time capsule into how you're thinking about everything. And then to kind of look back and say, like, see how things progress. So this is, this is yeah. great. Thank you so much for taking the time. No, I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate you reaching out, you know, and, and I look forward to, to our next interview. Yeah, I look forward to you know hanging out in person. But this has yeah, been come on out. <laughs> this Seriously, has been man. You need to. When I yeah. can, I will. I promise. I will. Yeah, I know you will. <laughs> Definitely. All right, brother. Yeah, thanks so much, right. man. Talk soon. Cool. Bye.